Today we're going to review something else you've already learned to really bring it home. The topic is the difference between literal and dynamic arrays. What you will learn is that literal arrays are not created by sending messages. Dynamic messages are created at runtime using messages. But both are instances of the array class. There are simply two methods for creating arrays. If you remember, to create a literal array, we use the syntax hashtag parentheses, and in the middle, I can put any object in textual form. In this case, the integer 45, the string milu, the number 1300, the boolean true, and the symbol hashtag tintin. If I ask this literal object for its class, the return value is an instance of array. The dynamic version of this literal array is right here. So to create a dynamic array, I take the array class. I create an instance using the method with, 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 with. I send it with all these values, and it creates an array class instance equal to the one above. It's just two different ways of creating objects. This is another version of the dynamic array. I could have created an array manually by sending the message new to the array class. Then I would have used at and put to fill in the array, and then return the array. This is another way to create a dynamic array. But we also have a specific syntax called syntactic sugar, which is made with braces. Okay? These braces enable me to write exactly what I wrote above, only faster and more concisely. But it's the same thing. This means I will use braces and put a set of expressions separated by dots, which will be evaluated to create the collection. The big difference between a literal array and an array created dynamically with braces if I take the expression, here's an example. I take a variable and initialize it at 12. I want to create an array. Since it's a literal array, I use hashtag parentheses, and I add a plus 1, 13, and it returns this array. It's an array that will contain the symbols a and plus, integer 1, symbol period, and integer 13. I do the same thing here with a dynamic array. a equals 12 braces a plus 1, 13, and I get an array with two elements, 13 and 13. Why? Because a plus 1 was evaluated as an expression. a equals 12 plus 1, 13. Each expression separated by a dot was evaluated before creating an array. So the important difference is right here. When I use braces, it executes expressions. However, when I use a hashtag parentheses to create a literal array, the literal expressions are not executed. Why not? Because it's the compiler that will create the array. In the case of a literal array. Here's another somewhat more complicated example. I start with hashtag parentheses, and I reuse parentheses inside, so this is one point, and I reuse parentheses to produce a nested literal array. We see that nothing was interpreted in this literal array, because it was created at compile time by the compiler. So we have one array that contains nested arrays. You can see them here. The first nested array contains 10, the symbol at, the integer 20, etc. To give you proof, if I ask for element 1 of this array, I get an array. Whenever I put parentheses in a literal array, it creates nested arrays. What's important to remember is that we have one single type of array in Faro, the array class and its instances. But there are various ways to obtain instances and create arrays. The first way is literal syntax, hashtag parentheses. Be careful. Arrays are created by the compiler at compile time. We have the simple dynamic form, array, new. I send the message new to the array class. And we have another more syntactically compact dynamic method, 
with braces before and after, and expressions separated by dots that are evaluated to create an array.